All right, very good. Ladies and gentlemen, we are recording and broadcasting. Um, uh, uh, the chair, uh, the meeting is yours. Great. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the June 12th meeting of the Delta Independent Science Board. Thank you for joining us this morning. I'm Elizabeth Canuel, chair of the Delta Independent Science Board, and I would like to call the meeting to order. Before we begin the meeting, I have a, a couple of housekeeping announcements. In accordance with federal, state, and local guidelines to protect public health and safety in response to the coronavirus disease, COVID-19, this meeting will be conducted entirely via remote access. This will be our first meeting that will take place via Zoom and uh, will be broadcast over CalSpan. We will take written questions and comments. Please email your public comments to disb at deltacouncil.ca.gov. In your request, please indicate the agenda item in which you would like your public comment to be read. If you prefer to provide oral comments, please use the raise hand function in Zoom or email disb at deltacouncil.ca.gov on the agenda item on which you would like to provide public comment. Afterwards, please wait until prompted for public comment. And when providing oral public comments, please state your name and affiliation. Um, at this time, I'm going to take roll call of the Delta ISB membership. Um, as I read off each name, please indicate in your declarations if you have discovered a conflict or potential conflict since the last meeting and will need to recuse yourself on any item on today's agenda. So beginning with myself, Elizabeth Canuel, I have no changes. Uh, Steve Brandt. Uh, Steve Brandt, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, no changes here. Tracy Collier. Tracy Collier, good morning, no changes and no haircut. <laughs> Joe Fernando. Joe Fernando, good morning, uh, no changes. Tom Holzer. Tom Holzer, no changes and no conflicts of interest. Jay Lund. Jay Lund, good morning, no changes. Richard Norgard. Richard Norgard, no changes. Vince Resch. Uh, I've been asked to be a uh, uh, expert witness on a case involving the California Department of Transportation. Other than that, no changes. Great. And John Weens. John Weens, no changes. And I'm, I'm just going to th thank you, everyone. I just want to check to make sure our presenters, John Calloway and Susan Tatayan, are on are on Zoom. And from my desktop, it looks like they are. Yes, Liz, I'm here. Great. And, uh, good morning. I'm here as well. Thank you. All right. Um, so uh, I'll begin with the first agenda item, which is uh, the Delta ISB chair report and business matters. Uh, my report will be uh, very quick this morning. I wanted to uh, point out that Joy Zedler's term on the Delta ISB ended on June 9th. Um, Joy will be helping us complete some of our ongoing reports, but, but she is no longer um, a member of the Independent Science Board. Um, next, I'd like to just give a, a brief overview of today's agenda. Uh, we'll have a, a brief report from Susan Tatayan, Council Chair, we will also hear from Delta lead scientist, John Calloway. Um, we will have a discussion and potential action item related to the operating guidelines for the Delta 
Independent Science Board. Uh, we will also have, uh, I guess, depending on that go how that goes, but assuming those guidelines are approved, we have an additional discussion and potential action item related to the election of a new Delta ISB chair elect. Um, and then we will also uh, have updates and discussion of current Delta ISB activities. And let's see, and then, we, uh, sorry. And then we'll end with a discussion and uh, yeah, a discussion of upcoming Delta ISB meetings and particularly a discussion of preparation for our August meeting. So th that's the lineup for this morning. And without, well, actually before I move on, are there any public comments on um, today's agenda? There are none. Great, thank, thank you, Edmund. All right, so without further ado, let's move to the council chair and executive officer report, which will be given by Susan Tatayan. Can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Oh, good. Yes. Um, so I'm glad to see most of you are looking healthy and just fine. Uh, <laughs> I'm a little stir crazy, so uh, forgive me if I sound a bit distracted. I have a couple of items to report this morning. One is we lost you, Susan. We've we've lost the audio for Susan. Can can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Oh, good. So the um, uh, I was just saying that the certification of consistency filed for the lower Yolo restoration project has been appealed, and therefore now the council is under ex parte communication prohibition for this project. And that means that council members and council staff um, will not communicate about the project uh, with any person outside of the council. Uh, the one exception to this prohibition is that the council can communicate about uh, administrative or procedural status of the project. Uh, so I just wanted folks to be aware of that. And um, looking to DPIC, the Delta Plan Interagency Implementation Committee meeting, the committee will be meeting July 13, 2020 uh, via Zoom from 1 to 2.30. And in continuing the theme of ecosystem-based management uh, from our last meeting, uh, we're planning on highlighting projects and programs, existing projects and programs that um, are aimed at ecosystem-based management. So at this July meeting, the uh, US Fish and Wildlife Service and US Bureau of Reclamation will talk about the Central Valley Project Improvement Act and give us all a, a review of that act and how things have been going and where they th see things headed. In addition, um, there'll be an item on the science action agenda. And there will also be an item on the Delta Science Funding and Governance Initiative. And under that item, I'm excited to announce that uh, the Bureau of Reclamation and the council will be presenting the, the first crosscut budget report. Uh, so it's it's a major milestone that we the the report is finished and i'm I'm happy to see that we'll be reporting it at DPIC. 
And since we don't, we did not have a May meeting, uh, that's all I have to report for today. Thank you, Susan. Are there any questions from members of the board for Susan? Susan, this is Tracy. Um, you probably can't tell us, but I'm curious if, if you can tell us what was the reason uh, for the appeal of the consistency finding or the reason given? Uh, I don't, and I'm you, not sure if I, I yeah. can tell you the details. Yeah, so, that's what I thought it was. Okay. Although the, the appeal uh, and the consistency determination are on the council's website. Okay, okay, thanks. Thank, yeah, th thank you for pointing out that that information is available publicly. Um, are there other questions for Susan? All right, well, not hearing any, we, we'll move on to our next agenda item. Thank you, Susan, and uh, You're welcome. We, we look forward to uh, hearing what comes out of the upcoming DPIC and uh, the next Delta Stewardship Council meetings. All right, uh, so next on the agenda is a report from John Calloway, the Delta Lead Scientist. Great, good morning, thank you, Liz. So I just I have two items to update you on. One is the search for the Sea Grant Extension Specialist. And the second is on the Science Action Agenda that Susan mentioned will be on the DPIC um, meetings agenda as well. So for the Sea Grant Extension Specialist, um, recall that this is a joint position between the Council and California Sea Grant. It, 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 the, the candidate who is um, hired for this position will work at the council closely with the science program as well as with the planning division on to really work on implementing the recommendations that came out of the, the social science task forces report and to lead the social science effort, coordinate the social science effort within the council and beyond. So we have four um, candidates for the position and they will be uh, interviewing over the next two weeks. As part of their interview process, there'll be a public uh, seminar brown bag presentation. It starts at 1145 and the four candidates are on June 15th, Joshua Cousins, on June 16th, Alejo Kraus Polk. Then the following week on Monday, June 22nd, Matthew Gergonas, and on June 23rd, uh, Jessica Rudnick. So I think it's a really interesting uh, group of candidates that I'm sure are all highly, they all are highly qualified and um, I think all could be very, very outstanding in that role as an extension specialist. So I encourage you to um, take part and um, listen in on the brown bags for each of those candidates. And there is a flyer that it has all the details on connecting for that, um, that was part of the package for you. Any questions on that, the Sea Grant Extension Specialist? Okay, so then the second item, the science action agenda update I've mentioned to you before, and I know you're all very familiar with the science action agenda, you know, that it's really the, the document that's part of the, the science strategy along with the science plan and the, um, Bay, and, and the state of the Bay Delta science. It identifies the key science actions that are needed to address the management issues and uncertainties in the Delta. And um, even though the current plan runs through the end of 2021, we are already beginning to update that to that will, it will be the plan that will be in place uh, from 2022 to 2026. The, the collaborative science and peer review unit within the science program is leading the effort and they've, they, that unit also led the effort of updating the science plan. So I think you're familiar with their work. Henry DeBay is the new, um, program manager within that unit. And Henry, along with Rachel Kloppenstein, Dylan Stern, and Eva Bush are working on this. So they have been doing outreach 
um, to the IEP, to CSAM, to CAMP, and to all, all of the broader collaborative groups within the um, within the Delta to to get input on management questions. So, what's really unique about this this time around in updating the science action agenda is that we're focusing strongly on identifying management questions first. So over the next two to three months, there'll be a, a significant outreach. There's a questionnaire that um, is just about to go out as well to get individual input on, on those management questions. And then later this summer, early in the fall, we'll have a workshop uh, after the staff has taken all that input and digested it down into a more manageable set of questions. There's very specific criteria that are being used to um, distill down those, the, the, the large number of questions that I'm sure we're gonna uh, receive into something more manageable. And then, as I mentioned, this workshop in the summer, late summer, early fall will be an opportunity to get much broader input on that and to come to some agreement on the priority management questions. And then following that, um, that will be the step to that the key to then lead into the step of developing the science um, actions that will address those management questions. So that will start identifying the science actions will start in the late fall or, or winter through the early part of 2021. And again, there'll be a series of outreach efforts with that and a workshop um, following that to to get co uh, Co to coalesce around the priority science action items for this update. So I, I'm, I know you all will be uh, engaged on that. The ISB has given lots of valuable input in the past on the science action agenda. So those that are at least that are continuing, we will be very happy to get your input. And even those who are leaving, we'd be, love to get your input since given your, your knowledge and um, awareness of some of the key Delta issues. So um, that's that's all I have for those two items. John, how, how did the um, members of the council uh, interact regarding the management questions? Do they, do they review them or do they offer them up? Or what? What? How? How does? How's, how does the interaction occur with the council? So um, <clears throat> I think we'll 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 at least be through the questionnaire or. Um, through additional outreach, we'll be getting their input on management questions, just like we would with all the other stakeholders. So actually, I presented it, the, the, this overview to the directors of the IEP as well. So we're, trying, we're, we're hoping to get input across the board from management staff to decision makers. So we will be reaching out to the council as well. Will, will there be sort of a consensus uh, from the council or is it an individual Kind of review. I think we'll probably go with individual input. The, well, so the idea is to, for the first stages, is to to get as much broad input as we can and collect a broad range of questions. Then use these the criteria that identify how we're going to um, prioritize and bring and and coordinate, bring together different questions because I know there'll be many questions ar around individual topics that are closely related. So we will, uh, the staff will, will work to do that. And then um, through the workshop is then where we'll try to get some uh, broader agreement. Thank you. Great. Other questions from members of the ISB? Hey, uh, John, I know there's a lot of interest in uh, ensuring that the science action agenda and the science needs assessment kind of run in parallel and complement each other. Uh, is there, is um, Henry the person who would take charge of this after you leave or how do we maintain that, uh, that connection? Uh, I think, so Rachel is leading the effort within the staff. So, and Rachel is also, Rachel and Henry both are involved closely and are also have been participating in the science needs assessment workshop. So. Yeah, I think that would be the best avenue. And actually, thank you for that question, Steve. I forgot to mention that. I think we we are working closely with you and, and Jay and coordinating this effort since they, they definitely are sort of synergistic efforts with the science action agenda focusing on the current immediate management needs and science issues and the science needs assessment looking longer term. So I think um, those we, we, we definitely intend for those to be very uh, well coordinated.
Um, other questions from the board? Yeah, I have a question on a different topic for, for John. How, how is uh, Lauren doing on her review of reviews? She is, um, she's slightly behind schedule, but she is getting, she's moving on it right now. And she actually just sent me an email this morning. So I think she will be getting in touch with you. Those of you who um, agreed to participate with her, I think she'll be getting in touch with you very shortly to, to move that forward. Uh, Jay, you are slowly sinking from the screen. I don't know if uh, if it's just me. If you could raise up a bit or, of a gesture, yeah. Okay. Well, if there aren't any further questions, th thank you, John, for the updates. And it's you know it's it's kind of exciting to hear about the uh, the next iteration of the science action agenda being in the work. So we will stay tuned. Yeah, I'm excited. It was actually fun. The, the last round was finished just as I started. So it came out, I think the first or second month I was here. So I'm, I'm excited to see it take off. Yeah, sounds good. Are there any public comments or questions for John Calloway? Right, um, I'm not hearing any. So let's move on to the next agenda item, which is a discussion and potential action item related to our operating guidelines. So uh, I'll just start with a, a little bit of background. Uh, the Delta ISB discussed the operating guidelines at its May 2020 meeting and discussed potential revisions. Uh, the proposed amendments revisions are part of today's meeting package. Um, the key revision was to clarify what happens with the succession of a chair and or chair elect due to an early vacancy. Um, and, and this is the uh, current situation with my term as chair ending on August 31st, 2020, and also the recent uh, uh, stepping down of Jay Lund from the chair elect position. So um, we have uh, the, we being the chairship, as well as in consultation with uh, the legal staff have revised the sections that uh, describe the chair, chair elect and past chair uh, roles and, and also uh, both the election, I guess, as well as how, uh, how, do, how, we do an, how we do elections and how, what happens in the case of someone stepping down early. And uh, today what I'd like to do is to just open the floor to discussion of these revisions. Um, in, I guess uh, Vera took it sort of as an opportunity to make some other changes to the language, mostly to provide clarity. But in particular, I wanted to draw the board's attention to the changes on page four, uh, which uh, particularly address the, the chairship positions. So I will, um, I guess, uh, maybe just give you a little bit of an overview. So we have basically described the, the leadership of the Delta ISB in terms of the three chairship positions, the chair, chair elect and past chair, um, and then sort of uh, defined how those roles um, are held. Um, you know, describing our election process, and then also described what happens in terms of a, a resignation or an early departure from any of those positions. So um, at this point, I'll just open the floor to board members to um, provide any comments on the new language that has been 
included in the guidelines. Vince, do you have your hand up? I'm sorry. Um, I, yeah. I think folks are. Um, if you if you do want to speak, you need to unmute yourself first. Yeah, Vince, we're not hearing you. You can hold your space bar down. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I, I think this sounds fine and uh, uh, it's very straightforward and I think we should just go ahead and approve it. And I'm willing to make a motion to that matter. Okay. I think, uh, Steve, did you want to say something also? No. Okay. Any, any other comments from members of the board? No, I agree with Vince. I think it's straightforward and clear. Yeah, we, we try to keep the, the language pretty um, simple. Um, I second um, the motion. Uh, before you do that, Jay, what about the other edits that are on the, uh, the operations guideline? Well, yeah, I, we, are there edit, are, are there, well, first of all, let, let's maybe just talk about the, the chair part, but if everybody is in agreement with that, language, we can expand the discussion to the other edits that were made. Um, I don't know, Tom, did you have, did you have something that you wanted to uh, alter? Yeah, the chairmanship section was fine, but I did, it sounded like we were just going to end the discussion at that point. So. Right, right. Yeah, so it should be what when we do uh, have a motion, it should be to accept all of the changes or to or or to use this as an opportunity to make adjustments before we accept the changes as final okay D then did you want me to make my other comment then sure okay um the beginning describes the council's um, um what the council does and i just wanted to make sure that was uh cut and pasted from something the council has prepared because otherwise it sounds like we're sort of telling the council what to do. I, where did the language come from at the very beginning? So, I mean, most, most of this language was here in our operating guidelines to begin with. There, there were just some small adjustments that were made. For, for example, in describing some of the activities of the council. Is, is that what you're asking? Yeah, I'm, I'm just curious who who made the changes. Was it the council or is it uh, whoever was editing the uh, operating guidelines? The uh, Those changes were largely made by the, the legal side of the, the, the legal um, council for the council, if that makes okay. sense. So it is official doc doctrine then. Th yes. That was my concern. I did, it, you know, when you start yes. editing a document, you can uh, go places where you shouldn't, but it sounds like uh, th that came basically from the council. Right, we, we did, I, I mean, yes, mo most of this document was already yeah, most of the text was already in our operating guidelines. There, there were some changes that were made, but those changes were largely made by Vera and Bethany in, in the legal office. Okay, I'm, I'm ready for Jay's motion. Let me, let me ask one question quickly on the bottom of page two, the footnote. It looks like this is something that was added, obviously. It says we submitted our comments on the final EIRS on California water fix and the ISB finished its consultation with the California Department of Water Resources. Um, we were reviewing them and we, uh, it's a small thing, but it sounds like we were in some sort of a formal consultation with DWR. Um, is that the case uh, or was it just that we provided our, our review as, um, as required by statute, at least for a Bay Delta conservation plan? Um, and I, and then we, when we say we've finished our consultation, um, again, we're expecting there's going to be another conveyance um, 
project proposed in which the ISB is likely going to be uh, reviewing again. So I'm just curious why we're needing to say that we've finished a consultation. It sounds like a pretty formal process. Right. I, again, I didn't write that text, but I, I think um, the earlier guidelines uh, listed our um, PDCP, yeah. our yeah, our uh, mandate to review BDCP and um, water fix. So, so this is so we don't have that as part of the mandate here, um, okay. b because those actions have been completed. Okay, it's just it's a like I said, it was a small thing, but it's I'm I'm fine with it. And Tracy, this is Edmund. Yep. Um, so I, if you if you look on your screen, we actually have um, the water code actually spelled out. Okay. Um, so if you look at the water code, it says the Department of Water Resources shall consult with the Council okay. and the Delta Independent Science Board. And that footnote was added um, by legal just to clarify that um, okay. the Delta Conveyance Project is a brand new project uh, and not related to BDCP. Um, so that's why that footnote is added in. Okay. But we can remove that part if you. No, I stand. Uh, that's that's if if consultation is in the water code, that's great with me. So. Okay. All right. Um, so uh, it it sounds to me like additional revisions are are not needed, and uh, we're prepared to go forward with um, taking action on this revised document. Before we do that, I'd like to see whether there are any public comments. There are none. Okay, so we have a, I think a, a suggested motion from Vince to approve the proposed amendments to the operating guidelines to be effective immediately. And a second from Jay, is there any further discussion? Okay. If not, I'm gonna do a, a roll call vote. So beginning with myself, I vote in support of these changes. Steve Brandt. I vote yes. Uh, Tracy Collier. Yes. Joe Fernando. Well, Tom Holzer. Aye. Jay Lund. Aye. Richard Nor Norgard. You're on mute, Dick. Thumb up or down? Is he giving up. us a thumbs up? Yeah, OK. All right, uh, Vince Resch. Yes. John Weens. Uh, yes. Thank you everyone for working through those revisions with, with myself as, as well as the, the chairship. Okay, so we will uh, now move on to the next agenda item which is uh, another discussion and potential action item, the election of a new Delta ISB chair elect. Um, and as a little bit of background for our audience, Jay Lund stepped down as chair elect um, in June, uh, sorry, in May. Uh, and as a result, the Delta ISB will need to elect a new chair elect in accordance with the amended operating guidelines, which were just approved by the Delta ISB at this meeting. So uh, the, uh, the plan is that um, upon my departure on August 31st, the, the person that we elect to be chair elect today will become chair and a new election will will take place um, probably in, in the fall after the new members have started their position. 
So um, at this time, I'd like to open up the floor for nominations. Um, as I already mentioned in, in writing, I, I would like to nominate Steve Brandt as a, a candidate for the chair elect position. And um, I guess uh, I'll ask Steve formally to say whether he accepts the nomination. Uh, yes, I'd be happy to accept the nomination. Okay. We also have an opportunity for other nominations from the floor. Are, are there additional nominations? Right, I'm, I'm not hearing or seeing any. So um, at this time, I would like to suggest a, a motion that we nominate past chair Steve Brandt to become the new chair elect effective immediately. Is there a, a second for the motion? I second. Okay. Any further discussion of the nomination? Thank you, Steve. Yes, thank you, Steve. All right, um, so again, we have to uh, go through a, another roll call vote. Uh, beginning with myself, I vote in favor. Steve Brandt. Steve Brandt. Uh, yes, I think I'm in favor. <laughs> Tracy Collier. Aye. Joe Fernando. Aye. Tom Holzer. I'm in favor. Jay Lund. Aye. Richard Norgard. Aye. Vince Resch. Sorry, I'm not hearing Vince. Oh, aye. Oh, sorry. And uh, John Weens. Aye. Okay. Thank you, everyone. So that there's a, a unanimous vote. Um, for in favor of Steve becoming the chair elect, and that uh, that happens um, that that's effective immediately. Sorry. Um, okay. Um, okay. So let's see. So uh, so the the so if Steve with Steve's nomination um, to the chair elect position, that means that the pair, the past chair position is vacant and our amended operating guidelines allow for a former past chair to step into the role um, with majority approval. So um, we can, uh, so, for now, so we can discuss this today or we can discuss it at, at a, a future meeting, but um, Jay is um, our only former past chair who is continuing on, on the board beyond August. Um, so I'd like to nominate Jay into the position of, of past chair. Are there, is there a second for that nomination? I'd like to second that and fully support it. And uh, are there other nominations from the floor? And we don't have another former past chair, but. If, so if all are in, so we, we can go through another roll call vote and, um, just confirm that. Oh, well, actually, sorry, I'm sorry, I'm jumping the gun. Jay, are, are you willing to um, accept the yes. nomination? Okay. I, I need to review my Roberts rules. Um, okay, so uh, if, if uh, there are no additional nominations for past chair, I'd like to go through and do a, a roll call vote. Um, again, beginning with myself, I support Jay Lund as past chair. Steve Brandt. 
Aye. Tracy Collier. Aye. Joe Fernando. Aye. Okay. Tom Holzer. Aye, and thank you, Jay. Jay Lund. Aye. Jay is supporting his own nomination. Uh, Richard Norton. Aye. Vince Resch. Aye. And John Means. Aye. Okay. Thank you, everyone. So, uh, so Jay Lund will become the chair. Sorry, will become the uh, past chair, effective immediately. Okay, so I think uh, I'm I'm really happy uh, that we're leaving the uh, the board with good leadership in, into the future. So on. August 31st, when my term ends, Steve will uh, move into the chair position. Jay will continue in the past chair position and the, the new board will have an opportunity to elect their own chair elect from, from the, the membership. So thank you, Steve and Jay, for agreeing to serve in these positions and for both your, your past and, and future leadership of the Delta ISB. All right, uh, so uh, that's all for the elections for this morning's meeting. We're gonna now move into the next segment of our meeting, which uh, focuses on updates and discussion of current Delta ISB activities. And um, I'm just gonna ask that we wait until all of the updates have been given before um, we ask for public comment. So the, the first, uh, update will be from Steve Brandt and John Weens on the ecosystems review. Take it away, John. Thanks, Steve. Uh, we are moving along on this. We have an initial draft that is has been sent to several external reviewers uh, for comments and we have received comments from two of them so far. I believe that we have another week or so uh, before we close that door and then uh, we'll undertake another revision of it based upon those comments and hope to have something to the board for discussion at uh, next month's meeting. Is that about it, Steve? Yeah, I, I would just add that uh, I think you all have a uh, our latest copy, and we've requested your comments by um, June 18th. And uh, I would, I think we're really looking for some uh, serious input onto the recommendations. We we have sent, as John said, this out to individuals in particular, and I think we sent it out to all of our uh, invasive species panelists individually. And, uh, and we're beefing up the literature review and citations and so forth in the document, but the, uh, where some real thought needs to be uh, added is uh, look at the recommendations. And in some cases, there may be things that come out of the monitoring review that might somehow intersect with the invasive species. There might be something, uh, I'm looking at Dick here in terms of uh, climate change and things like that, that might be a valuable sort of twist to it. So in terms of the current other reviews, we're undergoing see if there's any connections in there but the recommendations is where at least i see them some real meat could be added yeah and i would just reinforce that and say that we uh, we would really appreciate substantive comments not just wordsmithing and edits here and there but some real input and suggestions on the kinds of things steve mentioned Great. And any comments or questions for 
Steve and John. All right. Um, if not, we'll move on to the, the next review, uh, which will be uh, the monitoring enterprise review, and, and Vince will give us an update on that. Uh, thanks, Liz. Uh, as you know, we have sent a questionnaire out, and thus far we have received 30 responses. Uh, more have been promised, and we have sent out another request to complete the questionnaire. Uh, the deadline has now been extended to June 19th. Uh, the current batch of uh, questionnaire responses have been sent to the DISB lead authors on the monitoring review to assist in producing the interview questions. Uh, Cheryl Patel will help us organize and analyze the questionnaire and is preparing a tutorial on using the monitory, monitoring inventory tool, which will uh, also help us in component two of the review. Uh, a draft of the report of the monitoring enterprise review minus the questionnaire results and minus the interview information has been prepared by John Weens and me and has been sent out to the other lead authors for comment. Uh, we are planning to hold the interviews in July and will continue to work on the report. Two of the lead authors, Joe and Steve, are continuing on the board after August to ensure its completion and implementation. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Vince. Any questions or comments on the monitoring enterprise review? It's nice to hear about the uh, the strong responses that it, that you've received. Thank you. Um, okay. If there are no questions or comments for, for Vince, we'll move on to the water supply reliability review and Jay will give that update. Uh, we've made good progress. Um, well, we're making progress, I should say. Um, we have draft material for all the sections of the, uh, of the outline so far, but it still uh, has a lot of work to do. Um, we had a nice short conference call yesterday with uh, the authoring group. Um, and I, I think what we're gonna shoot for is to have a draft for the board members to review internally at least. Um, I'm hoping uh, early next month and that way we'll be able to get comments from you all, and then we can also use this then as a way of bridging with the new board members, the new board, so that they can learn something about water supply reliability and have input into this document. So that, that might serve several purposes. So is the goal to um, both have input from the present board membership, but but also to carry the review process over into the new board? Yes. Great. Thank you. Any questions or comments on water supply reliability? Joe or Tom, anything to add? I just say, I think we're making great progress. I mean, the document that we have right now, uh, is, parts of it are actually fairly well written and ready to go. It's just the sections that require attention that are slowing us down. Good, nice to hear that progress is being made and, and that uh, document is moving forward. Hey, uh, next, the next item for comment is uh, the science needs assessment. And I think uh, Jay, you'll be giving the update on that as well. Uh, yes, we had a, uh, um, a second in the workshop series. Uh, maybe some of the others uh, were attending on that. Uh, this had some uh, 
essentially agency leaders, uh, three of them, Campbell Ingram from the Delta Conservancy, Jennifer Pierre from the State Water Contractors, and Paul Souza from the US Fish and Wildlife Service, talking about what their expectations were for science and the use of science uh, in, and how that fits with a, a needs assessment. And I thought it was really very enlightening and, and very useful. Um, again, we had this uh, form of feedback where members of the audience, and I think we had what, 80 something people in the, in the audience um, could, could send in comments and uh, I, I think that collection is also gonna be great uh, as it was for the first one. So I, I think we're getting lots of good input and some very useful conversations as preparations for the science needs assessment workshop and, and final report. Um, we're now, I think, having to think about how to develop the needs assessment document itself. How should that be developed, written, vetted, um, and approved? Um, so I, I think that's sort of a, a set of strategic issues that we might want to talk about just a little bit here, um, but it's, it's really going to set the tone for what we, the details of what we do in the future. Steve, do you want to have add any more to that? Just a few details. The um, our next uh, discussion is on July twenty eighth, and now that we've essentially heard how what the climate uh, changes might be in the Delta, what management thinks that will mean to them in terms of uh, uh, the challenges they will face, the third workshop is really going to dive back into the science and say, therefore what science is needed to support those future decisions and uh, what do we need to know in order to answer management needs in the future? What do we need to start now? And we will be putting together uh, a panel for that in the same format as the last, uh, last meeting. On uh, July 13th, I will present the uh, status of where we are as part of the uh, DPIC meeting and as part of their also uh, their ecosystem um, theme for that day of the next DPIC, and well as uh, merging that with the discussion on the funding needs in the Delta as well, that will be part of that uh, on the 13th. That's all I had to add, Jay. Jay and Steve, I have a question for you about process. My understanding of how the, the wiring di diagram here works is you sort of have two audiences for the uh, the uh, product from the needs assessment. One would be the science action agenda, and the other would be just the education of managers. Is, it, is that uh, perception correct? I'll try and answer that first. I, I think, of course, we're aware of the science action agenda. In many respects, the uh, science action agenda, the way we're talking about it, is that um, that, that largely focuses on uh, what science do managers need right now? And the science needs assessment that we're talking about focuses on what science really do we need to start start now to meet the challenges of managers in the future. Clearly some things that are needed now are gonna be needed in the future and clearly some things that are needed in the future and started now can be used now. So there is that, that sort of uh, connectivity between the science action agenda and the, uh, the science needs. The, the fourth workshop we're holding, the fourth discussion will will go beyond once we know what the science is to are we, what's the science governance, the science funding, the science management and integration is necessary in order to meet those scientific needs. So I think the audience, uh, the audience is actually DPIC. DPIC is the co-host of the and, the, and the council as well, but particularly DPIC and the science uh, board are push are the uh, considered the co-hosts in this. We view them as one of our major um, uh, audiences for this because ultimately, once one identifies what those future science needs are in the context of management needs, uh, then uh, how science is being done, we hope will be uh, influenced, how it's done, how it's organized, how it's governed, how it's funded. So that is a major component of some of the recommendations we would make in the in the end. Jay, is that what's your thought? 
Yeah, I think that's about right. Um, you know, the, the science action agenda really looks out about a three to five year horizon. The science plan, um, nominal science plan is has a, a five year kind of horizon. So it's really should be thinking about a five to 10 year horizon. And I, the, the strategic, more strategic uh, science needs assessment, I think we should be looking out at about a you know, seven to 50 year kind of horizon. Um, we are probably updated much less frequently than the science plan, but hopefully the stiff and the backbone of the science plan in, the, in this direction. This is Tracy, I have a question. What, to what extent, uh, and I haven't looked at the documents lately that have been going on with the science needs assessment. I'm curious to what extent the rapid change thought piece is being sort of worked into the foundation of these discussions, especially this one with the, the upcoming one, Steve, with the um, sort of what is the science structure and governance. There were a number of suggestions in there about alternate ways to speed things up to get get us where we need to be faster. And I'm just curious how much the crosswalking is going on there. And Dick, maybe you can speak to that too. Well, I, I think that's very much part of what the science needs assessment is. I mean, it's the same body of thinking. Right. <laughs> so I, I, I see them as, you know, at least intellectually joined at the hip. Um, and certainly uh, it, in some of the, thinking it's, you know, certainly that, that report is, is highly cited. Okay. Yeah, I agree. And, and in fact, uh, Dick has uh, uh, joined our team as part of the science needs assessment as well. So uh, Dick, do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I'm, I guess, a little concerned that we're not stressing the more rapid rates of change that we are sort of asking the managers what their perceptions of the problem will be while we ourselves have done some work on what the problems are going to be and also done some work on what some of the solutions might be and that joined at the hip is it may be joined at the hip but it's not yet joined at the neck or something <laughs> okay well we'll try to achieve better fusion yeah, yeah. I think the, uh, at least the original intention was that the rapid change, you know, panel and, and documents that, that were developed would, would be, I guess, uh, part of the, would, would be embedded and integrated into the science needs assessment. So I guess I was a little bit surprised, Jay, to hear that you're talking about a seven to 50 year time horizon when, you know, I think the rapid change uh, documents and our panel discussion were sort of talking about a need to be much more nimble at, at shorter time horizons. So I don't, I don't know if Jay and Steve, you wanna comment further on, on how that how the framework of a rapid change will be sort of woven into the science needs assessment. I guess in, in my view, we, when we talked about uh, climate and uh, when John Calloway gave us talk about climate, we were focusing on, on the climate change aspect. And one of the Mentimeter questions we asked is what is the appropriate time horizon to be looking at in terms of when things are changed enough that are going to have uh, more extreme management implications. And there was a wide range of opinion when you couch it in the climate change uh, umbrella. I think as I look, we have a, uh, I want to say, very uh, first rough draft of the final report. And um, the after the introduction, it's problems of science with rapid and uncertain changes. And there's a couple sections on that. And then organize of expertise for common and scientific problems. There's uh, strategies for science supporting management with rapid change and promising approaches for managing science with rapid change. So I think all of that is really part of the overall theme. And, uh, and again, if we look at the science, it's sort of um, what science do we need to really start now? 
you know, in, in order to uh, be able to answer the questions uh, in a changing environment. So I, 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 this I think is all we need to keep reminding ourselves, but I, it hasn't been lost. This is all part of the same body of thought. I mean, it all comes out of our letter. It's all stems from the same root. Great. That, that's good to hear that there are good connections between the two activities. Um, any other comments or questions for Jay and Steve? Liz, I was just going to go back to Tom's question about the, the link between the science action agenda and the the science needs assessment. For the science action agenda, I think one of the really key roles it plays is to identify priorities for funding for the science program, for the competitive solicitations that we're doing. And um, we, I think we're very open to the input from the science needs assessment. Like Steve was saying, although the time horizon is longer, there may be some needs that where there's immediate action needed, immediate science to address some of those needs. So I think, <clears throat> we will be, we are very interested to incorporate the input from the science needs assessment workshop into the priorities for funding um, for upcoming solicitations. The, the next round of solicitation probably will be um, too soon to, to immediate, to have you know, some really specific response, but we will certainly be thinking about that. And, and as you all know, I think one of our goals is to have solicitations on a more regular basis. So every two years have that. And as they come forward in the future, we certainly will incorporate the science needs assessment ideas and recommendations into those funding um, priorities. One of the important things I think we need to do in this science needs assessment effort is to bring on some new board members because that's the right horizon. Mm -hmm. Other comments or questions? Good, good to uh, get an update on that. And I, I should probably know this, but are have the workshops been um, recorded? Like, is there an opportunity to go back to past workshops and and listen to the presentations? I think that's true, but Edmund would know for sure. Um, yes, two of the video, um, two of the recordings are now posted on the council's YouTube site. Um, it's also posted on the events page for the events. Um, we can circulate a link afterwards um, for ease of access. Great, that that would be great. Yeah, for me because they happen in the middle of my workday, I I haven't been able to uh, listen to them live. So I would definitely be interested in catching up on them. Yeah. <laughs> Any, any board member who has not listened to them, I would encourage them to do so. I've listened to both and I found them uh, very informative and, and thoughtful. The uh, presenters really uh, provided nice overviews of their ex in their areas. Yeah, and as Jay said, I think we've been also trying to encourage the new uh, incoming board members to listen to them because it could very well provide a framework for one or more uh, new reviews. And it'll really be up to the new board members to, to further these ideas to the extent that they buy into them. Yeah, I did. I let the new board members know about them, uh, the incoming, the nominated board members, and um, I'll remind them again before the July uh, workshop. I think, as Jay said, the, the attendance has been great. I think there was almost, including presenters, there was close to 100 people on the call on the last time. So we, we've actually growing numbers, not losing audience. So that, that's really encouraging. This has been far more, the workshops have been far more successful than I had imagined in, in many different ways. Well, I think everyone has become a lot more accustomed to, uh, you know, listening to presentations and participating in, in meetings remotely. So, you know, may, maybe that's, actually advantageous to this process in that many, you know, the, the reach can be larger than the reach would have been for an in-person workshop. Okay, all right. Uh, so let's see, the, the next update is, actually before I move on, I, I do wanna thank you again, 
Jay and and Steve and and also Dick for uh, continuing to move this forward. So next we'll move on to the IEP review and Vince will give an update on that. Again, thanks, Liz. Uh, as we reported to you at the last meeting, uh, IEP has asked the uh, Delta Independent Science Board for additional clarification on organizational issues uh, related to three of our recommendations in our report of the IEP review. Uh, Mark Lubell at UC Davis and Tanya Haikila, a professor at the University of Colorado, Denver, are working on a project on organizational structures of the science enterprise and how to more effectively link science and policy in the future. Steve Brandt is also involved in this effort. We spoke with them and sent comments regarding their questionnaire on science governance that has some overlap with both the MER questionnaire and relevant reports from the ISB. We have sent all uh, links to all of them on. Uh, we are sharing our questionnaire list with them for their survey, along with some of the MER network diagrams that were developed by ESSA for component one and for their reports. Uh, Edmund is continuing to put information together on the joint powers authority model that is being considered by some of the Delta organizations. And we will be back in contact with Steve Culverson, Stephanie Fong, and uh, IEP in general. Thank you. So Vince, maybe just, uh, could could you just clarify the, the uh, I guess the project that Mark Lubell and Tanya Heikola are, are working on, is that, I, I guess, is that something that was commissioned by IEP? Is it um, a more general, activity for the Delta Science Program? I guess I, I, maybe just a little bit more sure. context this is, related, this is more related to the Science Enterprise Workshop and the, uh, the details of that. As I said, Steve is sort of a liaison uh, with that in terms of developing and analyzing the questionnaire on government structure. So it's not, uh, it's not something that came out of IEP. We're looking at as an advantage in terms of uh, Remember, we're not trying to be prescriptive, telling IEP what should, they should do in terms of organizational structure, but this is a wonderful opportunity to uh, fit in a lot of the stuff that Dick did, especially on the organizational structure with what their survey and what their expertise is finding. I don't know, Steve, do you want to add anything to that? You're, as I said, you're a liaison with that. Well, Mark and Tanya held a workshop um, trying to remember how long ago it was, it might've been this year uh, on the governance issue. And, um, you know, I think Mark is also on our science needs assessment uh, um, yes. uh, steering committee. And so there is a connectivity there. I think the, uh, um, I don't know how closely they are formally connected with IEP. I think that they are looking at the various issues related to governance and, and, uh, and interaction among the various agencies and things like that. Their, their timeline seems to be that they want to have that questionnaire sometime. It's kind of fuzzy from, in my mind, at least towards the end of the year, maybe in the spring. So it's a little bit later uh, on a slower time frame than our uh, science needs assessment. I also think they're looking to use this as a framework for seeking funding to do some more uh, in depth. So I think they're using it as sort of a background analysis to look at um, developing more detailed uh, proposals to do work on this topic. Yeah, that's right. The uh, They're not connected with IEP. We're viewing this as a chance to get more information along with the Joint Powers Authority, which was one of the options that they talked about in, in, in governance. So it's uh, I think we're the link of trying to bring them together with IEP and IEP's needs uh, more than they are directly. And Steve is correct. They're using this to get more uh, as an approach to get funding. Yeah, I think I'll just add. So I think you all know Mark has a long history of working on these issues in the Delta. And it was actually his student, Matteo Robbins, who did all those network diagrams that were part of the Delta Science Plan, uh, highlighting the issues around organization and governance for the science plan. And so as you all highlighted, this is, uh, Mark has, and Tanya were in touch with the science program as well. We, we aren't funding it or directly supporting it, but, but you know, we're happy to see that the work go forward. And so they've been in contact with us just as they have been with you to, to 
make sure that their work is connected to the other efforts that are going forward. Great. Yeah, that, I think that that sounds good. I, I know we, uh, you know, when, when we provided our review of IEP, we, you know, we, we suggested that they should consider alternative organizational structures, but since none of us are experts in, in that, it, it's nice to know that uh, Mark Lubell and Tanya Heikola it, and their effort, you know, might augment other information that we can provide to IEP. So, yeah. Yeah, thank, thank actually, you. that was the way when we talked about that recommendation, this is specifically what we said is to bring people like that in. So I think this is very fortuitous uh, when that this is, is going to continue. Great. Any comments or uh, questions for, for Vince or others who are working on some of the outreach from the IEP review? Do you, do you know, uh, Vince, if there is still a, a plan to meet with the IEP directors? They keep on saying yes. Uh, Tracy has probably been the best contact with them through Stephanie Fong, and uh, we've not, not heard anything back. I think you're on mute, Tracy. Uh, yeah, there's been no, there's nothing concrete as far as a meeting. I think we are waiting to get something back on the Joint Powers Authority um, assessment. And it's, but I think it is time we should probably push for a meeting, for a, a Zoom meeting with the directors. And we'll talk, so Vince, you and I should talk with Stephanie and Steve about that. Great. Other questions or comments for Vince and or Tracy? Okay, hey, at this time, we'll take uh, public comments on any of the review updates that were given during agenda item seven. There are none at this time. Okay. Thanks, Edmund. All right, so uh, let's move on to the next agenda item, which is preparation for upcoming Delta ISB meetings. Um, I guess uh, do, uh, it's very unfortunate, but because of the COVID-19 situation, it, it's likely that both the July and August meetings will be remote. And yeah, I think, uh, I know I feel very disappointed in, you know, not being able to have another in-person meeting before I rotate off the board, but hopefully there will be other opportunities for, uh, for meeting and, and getting together down the road, maybe at some of the, the Bay Delta conferences, et cetera. So, uh, so I'm gonna just run through uh, what we have been planning for the July 10th meeting. Uh, this meeting would be uh, a, approximately a 9 a.m. to noontime meeting. Um, we don't really have very many things planned at, at this time, but uh, I guess I, I'd be willing to entertain suggestions from the board um, really, the, the only thing that is on the agenda for that meeting is the, the typical status updates of, of the different review efforts. So is there anything that board members would like to see added to the July 10th meeting agenda? I'm hoping that we can have some uh, a draft for the... Uh, water supply reliability report. Um, I'm not sure whether it's that draft will be in a form that's worth having an open discussion at that mm -hmm. July 10th meeting, but hopefully we can at least be getting written comments back uh, from individual board members by that time. Mm -hmm. uh, if that's okay with Tom and Joe. 
Yeah. yeah. Maybe what we could do is focus on the recommendations and encourage a discussion of our draft of that aspect of it. Right. That sounds good. And it also sounds like um, maybe we'll want to have a more formal discussion um, of the ecosystems review as well. I, I know that um, you know individual comments are are being submitted to Steve and and John, but we haven't actually had a like a formal discussion of that review in one of our public meetings. So so that. I, I guess I envision having some time dedicated to, to such a discussion in July. I think that would be a good idea. Uh, I think as Steve said, we need to um, pretty much come close to finalizing our recommendations if we're going to keep on schedule to try to finish this up before we go off the board uh, or before I go off the board and several others. So um, I think having some substantive discussion in the July meeting would be useful. Okay. One other topic that might be useful is just a little bit of a brainstorming session. You know, coming up in uh, in September, there will be not only a major change in uh, the uh, composition of the board, <clears throat> but also the challenge of dealing at uh, dealing with meetings that will likely be uh, remote for foreseeable future. And I think that one of the things that makes our board, uh, which I view as very successful, is sort of the productive culture that comes with having folks that are uh, comfortable with each other, trust, have some camaraderie and things like that. And I think it will be challenging enough with a bunch of new board members coming in, but also with the inability to meet face to face. So if there's any maybe it's a brainstorming session on how to make our meetings productive, things we can do to kind of uh, ensure that um, that the board continues to be productive and moves forward under these uh, challenging conditions, maybe just a brainstorming thing. Yeah, actually, I, I did have a, a note about, um, we, we were gonna um, have some type of discussion about Delta ISB video conferences and, you know, how folks like Zoom and other platforms, what changes can be made to ensure that remote meetings are effective? Um, yeah, I think a, an important question, what is what is the impact on the board um, with the possibility of no in-person meetings for, you know, for quite a time into the future? You know, how, again, as Steve mentioned, how to build relationships and, and trust and uh, yeah, connectivity with, with one another. So if, I guess, I, I think that is a good idea, Steve. And I would appreciate it if members of the board maybe just thought about this topic individually before the July meeting. You know, what do you, what do you think um, are good approaches to effective remote meetings what other activities can take place to build those relationships and strengthen the network of the new Delta ISB membership. Um, I think we all benefited from, uh, I, I felt like our remote meetings and teleconferences were stronger because we had the foundation of our in-person meetings. But if a new group is starting, from a, a purely remote perspective, um, it'll be important to, you know, try to put some structures or processes in, in place that can help build those relationships. So um, before we go on, does anybody have thoughts about that or? Um, well, John Calloway was working on onboarding for the new members. Yes. And um, well, I think it's important for us to try and figure out how to make this process work. The new board members are going to be critical because they're going to be ch challenged more than we are. And uh, may maybe they'll have some suggestions that could help and it could be part of the onboarding discussion that we have with the members. You know, that this is just the future we've been dealt. And, you know, how can they, 
how can they see us work uh, efficiently through that? Right. Well, Liz, this is Vince. I all think it, the, it's critical that we, in July, get some type of a report from Lauren because this re review of reviews is going to be something that's going to be very, very helpful to the, the new board and then to follow up again in, uh, uh, in August. Uh, I'm glad that John said that, John Calloway said that he'd gotten a report from her. But I think this is going to be, if we can turn anything over to them that would be useful, it would be this review. Right. And, and we do have Lauren on the agenda for August. I was also going to walk through um, the plans for that meeting. But um, I don't know, maybe, John, do you think that Lauren could even give us a short update in, in July? It, I don't know. It, it might be helpful to kind of get a sense of, of where she is and um, how we can help um, between July and August. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll speak with her today and suggest that. She definitely is planning to present to you in August, but mm -hmm. I'll, I'll let her know. Or she may be listening right now, so she may be hearing your suggestions. Yeah, it, it might be good to uh, at, at least to get an update from her. You know, we, we wouldn't be anticipating that her review was complete at, at the July meeting, but it would be maybe helpful to know where she is with that and, and how we can best uh, facilitate the process. Hey, Liz, I'd also re recommend, I had said to her some, some first thoughts is that, you know, we just start doing it now, not wait to just react to what she's written, but send mm -hmm. her some thoughts now as to what we think would have helped in terms of our past reviews. Okay. Yeah, that that's good. And uh, was she, do you know if she's open to that? I never heard from her, so I don't know. Okay. I think she's very open to getting your input. So I would, that's a good suggestion, Vince. I would encourage you if you have thoughts. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, I have one question. Do, do we have any idea about the California reopening? For example, Indiana, we can meet less than 20 people on uncertain meetings. So at least with the new board members, if we can meet you know, the board members and the others on a Zoom meeting, so that will give us an opportunity. California allows that to have a meeting with the new board. Yeah, so we will have the new board members at our August meeting on Zoom, but we, we won't have we won't have an opportunity for an in-person meeting in August. Joe, are you suggesting we meet in Indiana? <laughs> no, I was I was expecting there is some we can if there is a reopening possibilities in California. Sorry, we're not I'm not hearing you, Joe. <laughs> oh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, yes. so what I was expecting is that if there are possibilities that California will reopen for meetings less than 25 people, then that might be opportunity to have the in-person uh, on a reduced capacity for others. So, yeah, I think one of the bigger concerns though as well is the travel. I think if, you know, once there be, Currently, there isn't that opportunity, but once that opportunity is available, um, if everyone were here in Sacramento, I think we could probably set it up with social distancing, but asking the board members to travel to attend that meeting, I think is also diff a challenge. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know, what, what, I think we'll have to just see, see how things continue to develop. I don't, I don't envision that there will be in-person meetings anytime in the, in the near future. I hear New Zealand's a good place to be right now. I'm not sure they would let us in though. We have to quarantine for two weeks before our two day meeting. Jay's got a boat. It'll take two weeks to get there. <laughs> Can I take everybody though? Okay, so uh, so for July, um, I think the 
So the things I have will be sort of a discussion of the water supply reliability and ecosystems reviews, uh, some brainstorming about remote meetings and how to, how to improve or make them as, as effective as possible. Um, we're gonna see whether Lauren can give us an update on her review of our reviews. Um, and are, are there any other items or if you can't, if you're not thinking about them now, I'd appreciate it if you sent me um, your ideas. Send, I guess send them to Edmund and myself. Okay. So I, I also wanted to talk about the August meeting and uh, where, again, this will be a remote meeting. Uh, we're envisioning that it will be held over two day, two one day periods um, with it not lasting the full day on either day. We, we wanted to sort of, um, I guess, stretch things out a little bit, allow for adequate breaks, make sure that there wasn't Zoom fatigue. Um, so, uh, so I'll just kind of walk through. So the meeting dates are August the 13th and 14th. On the 13th, we're envisioning um, approximately 9 a.m. until 2.30 with a, a one hour lunch break. And uh, we would start with um, some of the typical, you know, business items, welcome and declarations. Uh, we would have one minute introductions of current and uh, incoming board members. Uh, we would cover uh, my report, the chair's report and, and business matters. Um, and, uh, so, oh, sorry, let me, so we would allow the new board members to each do five minute introductions so that um, both so we can get to know them, but also so that they can get to know each other. There would then be a presentation of Delta legislation and the intent of the legislation that um, supports the Delta ISB and its activities. Um, we would talk about our review processes. So in other words, what's mandated in the legislation. Um, and then we would go into updates on our current reviews. So, th so the idea would be to give the board members some context about the, the review work, um, both the, the legal side of things, but, but also the the practical and logistic, logistical aspects of the reviews, and then give them a flavor for the reviews that are underway and updates on, on those reviews. So that, that would basically uh, define the morning activities on August the 13th. Um, uh, we, we would then, kind of close that session by just having a very open discussion about potential review topics for the new Delta ISB members to consider. So we would distribute the document that we've that we have been developing with different review topics and uh, have a, a discussion of those topics both with present and incoming board members. So any I guess any comments on the that framework for the the first morning activities? I know this is maybe a little bit hard to do orally. So, um, and then uh, so then we we're going to actually have a lunch break. So the idea is that everybody needs to maybe step away from their screen and have a, a break in, in their own homes or offices. Um, after lunch, we would have an introduction to the council and how 
Delta ISB reviews are utilized by staff. And for that segment, we would, um, let's see, Louise Conrad would give an overview of the science division of the Delta science program. Um, sorry. And she, as part of that presentation, she would also uh, briefly mention the IEP lead scientist who also sits on the science side of the, of the council. Um, then there would be a report uh, probably by Jeff Henderson of the planning division for the science program. Um, and then an overview of DPIC and so the science needs assessment by Amanda Bowl. So again, kind of just high level, we don't want to sort of introduce every person that the board will be interacting with, but to give them some perspective on the science program and a, a few of the lead people in the science program organization. Um, and, and so basically for each of those segments, there would be a, a 10 or 15 minute overview by Louise, Jeff, and Amanda. And then we would follow each of those segments with a question and answer period uh, where uh, board members could ask questions. So, so and, and that would conclude day one of the meeting. So any thoughts or comments on that structure? Uh, yeah, Liz, um, I, I'd really like to have somebody like uh, Alf Brandt uh, for his comments, uh, he's, he's with the legislature. He was in on the original drafting of the legislation that we all operate underneath. I think it would be very useful for him to give a little presentation on what their legislative intent was. Um, I'm yeah. just about us becoming this advisory committee to the council's science program. I yeah. envision something much larger. I guess we we uh, we have discussed that possibility. I don't know. I felt like maybe it would be it was a little bit too formal for the intent of this meeting, but um, but we can we can put that, you know, we can discuss that further. And I'd be interested in hearing what other board members think about, about inviting ALF to the meeting. I mean, I know, I don't, I don't think that type of uh, introduction was ever given to any other board members over the, the past 10 years. So it, it seemed, again, it just seems a little bit formal, um, but. So Liz, yeah. I, I think it's a good idea. I think, it, I think it, we would have benefited from hearing from ALF at the outset. Um, it took us a while to get our feet under us, but I think Alf would be a really good person to talk to the incoming board and to sort of charge them up a bit. Great. Uh, other comments or, or thoughts? We, we can explore the, the possibility of inviting Alf to that, you know, to that intro session. Uh, Liz, one thing I think that's going to be interesting about once the the names of the the new board members are announced, you've got some people with really a lot of experience uh, in the Bay and Delta, and I think they're going to be clearly critical to bringing the rest of the board members uh, up to up to speed. And again, we we didn't really have that. We had Jeff Mount, uh, Dick, who had been on the uh, Cal Fed, and and others with various experience. But I think this the fact that you've got some new board members coming on with extensive experience is going to be very, very useful. Right. And of course, we have Steve and Jay and Joe and Tom continue. Right. So it, again, it's a different situation when 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 we started, you know, uh, you know, I don't know, in a, a, a much less initiated situation. So I, I'm I'm optimistic ab about things moving forward. <coughs> um, so other than uh, Edmund and I can uh, reach out to Alf and 
see whether he's available to address the board during August. Any other suggestions on, on day one? And then I'll, I'll go on to day two. Okay. Uh, so uh, day two, the, the 14th would again be, excuse me, a partial day, um, approximately 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, again, with, uh, with breaks and, and with lunch on, on your own. Um, so the, let me just see. So, so basically day two would be focusing on key stakeholders. Um, and the idea was, would be to just invite a small number, we're thinking on the order of six stakeholders to attend in August. And then we, we have a much longer list of stakeholders. And the idea would be that at subsequent meetings of the ISB, um, additional stakeholder sessions could, could be um, could be scheduled so that the board has a chance to uh, meet state the stakeholder community and and you know develop a rapport with them. So uh, so in August we'll, we're going to try to invite six presenters. Um, again, there will be others uh, that are scheduled in in subsequent meetings. Um, so after the stakeholder presentations, there would be a break. Um, we have, we still have listed as a tentative agenda item is a DWR presentation on the Delta conveyance project. As you'll recall, when we sent our letter to them, we requested that they attend a meeting and ideally that they attend a meeting before the membership changes. So anyway, we have an invitation out to them. We're, we're not certain yet whether they'll be able to attend. Um, after the Delta Conveyance Project discussion, assuming it, it occurs, there would be a lunch break. Then there would be a Lauren Hastings presentation on the Delta Science Program's assessment of the impact of the ISB's reviews. And then we would have reflections from the members of the ISB who are leaving the board and uh sorry and then uh and then sort of planning for for the future um for future meetings so that, that that's what we have for um for the for August and again I'm interested in your thoughts about what would be an effective first onboarding meeting. We're also preparing some documents and putting together a Dropbox of resources and trying to identify sort of must read documents and then documents that can be available to board members, you know, as time goes on or, you know, as they want to learn either the, when they need to need to or want to learn more about the the board and the uh, science program as well as the stewardship council so any any suggestions or thoughts about august i'm wondering i i know that was hard to deliver by orally and by Zoom. So um, I'm wondering, maybe um, Edmund and I can put together an email that gives a summary of what we have planned and allow folks to reflect on those plans and provide feedback and, and your own ideas. So any, any comments or questions before we move on? Liz, I just have one comment, and it might not, might not be practical. You'd have to find the right person. And the comment is, you know, it would really be nice to have an overview of the Delta 
per se, you know, like a half hour to an hour talk of, you know, this, this is the state of the Delta, maybe a little bit of the legal stuff, but mostly where, where we actually are with the Delta. Um, and I, I, I'm not sure who that person would be. I mean, we don't want them to be a provocateur, but uh, um, just getting that overview over to the new board members, I think could be very helpful. Yeah, I'm not sure I, uh, we did actually um, have, I guess John Calloway maybe and I discussed the idea of having just a, an introduction to the Delta ecosystem um, as a possible presentation. I'm not sure what you meant, Tom, by where we are in the Delta, like did, did you- I mean, mean a, comp a comprehensive look at the Delta, I mean, it's, that while the ecosystem's a big part of it, uh, the, the water supply reliability thing that I've been working on with Jay and Joe has really educated me to a, a big problem there that uh, really most of us aren't too familiar with. Uh, you know, we have a huge water infrastructure in California and uh, particularly with climate change and the environmental concerns. I mean, we, we just have a big challenge in front of us and uh, having somebody spell all that out uh, it's going to require a, a unique person almost uh, because most of us don't have that breadth. But uh, it, it's more than ecosystems. It's what's going on in the Delta today and where it's headed. Okay. Yeah, I think yeah. that's a, a good idea because the, the program, the way it is now, is, is talking about a lot of the uh, stakeholders and programs and entities operating in the Delta, which I think are very important to. Uh, for the new board members to understand, but also to talk about uh, the Delta itself, you know, as a system, I think is, uh, is something useful. Now, whether that's done in August or done in September when the new board is fully on board, um, you know, it could go either place. Yeah, well, we could certainly have some type of short, you know, short introduction, you know, with the assumption that there will be multiple opportunities and if I understood the the previous discussion with with Jay and Tom the idea and, and Joe the idea is that the water supply reliability review will carry over into the new the new board so um, there will be involvement in that way too but I can um, yeah I, I'll we'll think about including some type of introduction to the Delta. I mean, one of the themes that came up in the last uh, needs uh, workshop, I, I forget the phrase exactly, it was something like flow and habitat, but what it was was, you know, we tend to look at flow as flow and habitat as habitat. We don't look at them together and it's pretty clear we have to do that in terms of managing the resources we have. And, uh, you know, having somebody who's familiar with that challenge, I think uh, could really educate the board members in a broad context. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, remember too, some of the board members are probably better educated than some of us are about the Delta <laughs> or, you know, some, some of the incoming board members. So, you know, again, there, there's a, a mix of backgrounds and expertise, but I do think just to um, even, even out the playing field, so to speak, it, it'd be good to have some overview of the Delta. So thank you for that suggestion. One other suggestion is that uh, is that maybe we can hear from John as well, John Calloway, on his uh, uh, reflection on on where he thinks the program is going and the, the needs, and it'd be good to get his perspective. And uh, being that this will be his last meeting at our uh, board meeting as well. Yeah, that's that's a great idea, Steve. Actually, I'll already be long gone. My, I'm I'm done at the early part of August, but I'll, I'll part. I I do plan to participate in it still, so I'd be happy to do that. Yeah, that that would be great, John. We know where you live. <laughs> yes, and in the days of Zoom, it doesn't even matter where you live. Yeah, okay. it's a, it's a Thursday, Friday. Yes, I I'm going to be teaching Monday, Wednesday, so that that should be fun. Okay. Oh, so do you think you'll already be teaching in mid-August? 
I think we're starting around the 15th. We, you know, there's all this talk of starting slightly earlier. Yes. To get in classes before uh, Thanksgiving. And I think we're, it's still, I think in the next week or two, it'll be, our uh, schedule will be set up. Okay. Great. Well, I'll just, uh, other suggestions. I don't know, I'm thinking Dick or Tracy or Vince, can you think of anything that would have been helpful to us when we were starting our tenure on the board? Anything we, we wish that we had had? That's a good question, good way to put it. I'll think on that and send you any thoughts I have. I think the advantage of the State of Bay Delta Science 2008 report, which was a very general report, but it was also published in a physical volume. Mm -hmm. And it gave a pretty broad overview of the basic conditions in the Delta. Um, you know, and then as we've added board members individually, the briefing has not been the same, but now we're adding five or six. So, um, uh, Liz, I think the biggest issue for me that took the longest was figuring out when people just dropped names like Frank's track and this and that, what they were talking about. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, it would have been great if we had had a very detailed map, like you can get at the, uh, at the wineries, uh, just, just sort of explaining some of that, uh, you know, the field trips helped tremendously. And I know John and I went on a boat trip uh, that first, after the first meeting, that was very, very good. Uh, but I think that's going to be, for the people that aren't familiar, that's going to be something to just get familiar with and, and ask the speakers not to just drop these names like everybody knows what they're talking about. And so Edmund is working on getting every board member a really good Delta map instead of having to use uh, Franco's fishing map. Um, that request has been uh, to the science program for at least six or seven years. <laughs> yeah, I think we actually, when we first started 10 years ago, was, well, the board members ought to have a decent map. And on my wall, I still have a Franco's fishing map. Yeah, every time we get close to um, doing the maps, something comes up that prevents it, but we'll try to push for it again as a parting gift too. Okay. Yeah, it can be a, both a, a welcoming and a parting gift. <laughs> yes. All right. And in uh, John Callaway, I have a question for you. Do we have an estimated time for when the new ISB board members will be uh, pub made public? There's, uh, the, the current plan is that at the end of the month, at the well, actually, probably in the next week, the names will go out because the we're we're hoping that they will go to the council at their meeting in June, which is um, two weeks from yesterday. Okay, so that means uh, yeah, very soon. Because at that point, some of us individually, depending on expertise, can can reach out and talk to people one on one about. Yeah, and I would encourage you to do that. Yeah, right. Okay. All right. Well, again, you know, I, so I'm going to ask Edmund to put together kind of just a, a, a draft of what we have planned for August and ask each of you to look that over and provide additional suggestions or, uh, yeah, your, your ideas for onboarding. It, it can also be onboarding activities that extend beyond August. In other words, we're not gonna do all of the onboarding just at, at that one meeting, but we wanna start that meeting on a good tone and give the new board members an appropriate introduction to, uh, to the board and its work. And Liz, you, you mentioned, but I think reiterate, if you have thoughts on essential reading, because I think Tom's suggestion that I, to me that was valuable was don't overwhelm everyone with just tons and tons of material, but come up with a, a sh relatively short list of essential reading for the new board members. And then like Liz said, a, a list of references. So if you have thoughts on what you think, I, I Dick, like your suggestion on the, the 2008 State of the Bay Delta Science or uh, other things that would be really critical for them to, to begin to get up to speed would be valuable. Okay. 
All right. Th thank you, John. And thank you, everyone, for your suggestions. Um, OK, so let's see. We will now move on to. Sorry, I have, I've lost my place in my agenda. So the we'll move on to the next agenda item, which is just a review of items for follow up from this meeting. And I'll ask Edmund to give those, to share those with the group. Yeah, so the first one I have is that today, um, during welcome and declarations, Vince Resch um, reported that he's been called to be an expert witness for the California Department of Transportation. I'll be updating the ISB disclosure page with that announcement. Um, at the meeting today, you guys took three actions. The first one, um, is that um, there was a motion to amend the operating guidelines that are part of your meeting package. The motion was made by Vint with a second from Jay Lund. And then the, the operating guidelines in your um, meeting package was approved unanimously. Um, the second two actions you took is related to the election of the chair based off the operating guidelines that were amended. So today, um, Steve Brandt was elected as the chair elect effective immediately. This left a vacancy for the past chair position and the amended operating guidelines allowed for a former past chair to step up. And um, Jay Lund has stepped in and the majority or actually unanimously approved by the board, um, he can fill the past chair position. So thank you to Steve and Jay um, for continuing their leadership on the chairship. For the different um, reviews, for the ecosystems review, um, th there's a current draft part that's part of the meeting package that is currently undergoing expert review by the panelists. Um, panelists comments are due um, June 18th, and if individual members have comment on that draft, please submit them to staff. And there's an ask from John Weems and Steve Brandt um, to pay particular attention to the recommendations section. For um, the monitoring enterprise um, review, um, Vince noted today um, that the questionnaire has been um, extended the deadline to June 19th. So this is more of a follow-up item for the attendees. So if you haven't already completed the questionnaire, please go ahead and complete it, which is posted as part of the meeting package for today. For the water supply reliability review, um, the lead authors are aiming to have at least a draft for um, internal feedback um, before the July meeting. For the IEP outreach, um, so staff are still working to summarize some of the um, joint powers authority discussion that's occurring in the Delta to help inform implementation of the IEP recommendations. Um, I have that follow-up item that Tracy will continue to get in touch with leadership um, about a future discussion with um, the IEP directors or their de designees on um, implementation of the review recommendations. Um, the other item that I have is um, I will summarize the discussion of planning for future upcoming meetings. And it'll be great to get feedback um, once you receive the summary and outline for the meetings in July and August. Um, one thing that I have um, for July is that board members should continue um, to think about um, how we can make video conferences more effective or kind of like how we can reduce the impact of not being able to meet in person. So something to think about in July. As part of our planning for future meetings, I also have that John Calloway will reach out to Lauren to see if she could provide a brief update of where she is with her review of the effectiveness of past Delta ISB reviews. Um, the idea is that she'll provide a very brief update in July and a final presentation um, in August. Um, other than that, um, are, am I missing anything from our follow-up items? I think you got everything, Edmund. Is there anything that Edmund has missed? I don't think so, as usual. Yes, he's always very thorough and efficient. Makes my job easier. Okay, so uh, 
we'll go on to the next agenda item, which is uh, public comments for matters that are not on the agenda, but are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the Delta ISB. Are there any comments from members of the public? There are none. Okay. So any final comments from members of the board before we adjourn? Well, well, I, I wanted to ask John Calloway, what's that chandelier hanging broken from his ceiling? <laughs> <laughs> That's just a cheap old light that was in our house that when we moved in. So okay, looks like yeah, okay. <laughs> not not a chandelier. <laughs> and 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 Liz looks like she has one of those propeller beanies on her head. The whole yeah, time. <laughs> I know. I've been looking at that ever since I sat down. I've been thinking, oh no, I should have turned that <laughs> off or adjust uh, the screen. Yeah. But it's very yeah. warm here. I've been resisting having a seizure the whole time. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> okay. Anyway, well, yeah, great, anyway. great meeting, folks. Uh, yeah, good, good to see everybody again, and we'll be back in touch in another month. Yeah. Th thanks, everyone. Stay healthy, and thank you for all of your work and contributions to the board. Thank you. Thanks, all. Bye bye. Bye bye. See you, everybody. Take care. <laughs>